So <clears throat> let's look about combining functions. You're pretty happy with understanding what a function is. It's a relation, takes one input and sends it to exactly one output. So we're pretty happy with functions. Let's start to put them together. Um, let's say f of x equals x squared g of x equals 2x plus 3. So you're probably, I mean, you've actually done this before, we're just going to formalize it a bit. So if you have f of x, and this is g of x, f of x plus g of x, you simply add the two together. This will equal uh, x squared for the f of x plus all of g of x to x plus 3. All right, nothing surprising there. You can also subtract them. So this will be x squared. The thing with subtracting is watch that you subtract the whole thing off, 2x plus 3. I mean, this happens quite a bit, and it'll trip you up a bit. But make sure when you, there's a minus sign, there's a parentheses on these so that you know to subtract both parts. Uh, parentheses are free. free f feel free to use a lot of them. Uh, so this ends up being x squared minus 2x minus 3. Uh, when we were finding, you've already done this, when you are finding uh, the average rate of change of a function, you've had to subtract the function at x1 minus x2. And if you do, if you're very careful with the signs, often this constant will cancel out. But if you're not, you end up with twice the you end up with something that's not really there. So that's how subtraction works. You can also divide them and multiply them. Do to do x squared over 2x plus 3. The only thing I'll say about this is notice that the domain kind of changes. These, if you do the domain, remember the domain trick. First assume it's all reals. Then you look where the denominator is zero. There's no denominator here, so that never happens. Then you look for square roots or other even powered roots. There aren't any there. So the domain of both of these is all real numbers. This one, however, now has a denominator. And so whatever makes the denominator zero has to be excluded. Let's see, what is that? Let's see if x was minus three halves, then we'd have to exclude that from the domain. All right, so those are pretty straightforward. Uh, notice that f of x plus g of x equals g of x plus f of x. You can reverse these, that's fine. Let me clear this out. And we'll do functions multiplied together. Uh, remember this was x squared what was it? 2x plus 3. Multiply it together. You just multiply these things through. So it'll be 2x cubed plus 3x squared. No problem there. Notice if you reverse this, you get the same thing too. There's one other thing we want to talk about, and that's function composition. Again, you you did this last time, although you didn't, you may not have known it. And this is when you take a function, but its argument is another function. It's like this. So f of g of x. We say this is f composed of g of x. All right. So what this means is it's a little different. I'm going to write these functions again. Whoops. Uh, f of x was x squared. Again, this works with any function. We'll stick with the nice ones for now. 2x plus 3. This means wherever you see x, replace it with the g of x. So this becomes we have x squared is f of x. We take out the x and replace it with all this. So this becomes 
2x plus 3 squared. All right, so that's f composed of g. Now there's, it's interesting to know that you can't switch these around. Or you, if you switch them around, you get something completely different. You certainly can't switch them around. This is g composed of f of x. This means you have g, but wherever you have x, you replace it with f of x. So this is 2. We replace that x with x squared plus 3. 2x squared plus 3. All right, notice that's very different from this. We multiply this out. I will multiply this out just for fun. Let's see, 2x squared times 2x squared is, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. The cross product, you remember is 2x, well, I'll write it out. Don't let these things trip you up. Remember good old foil, that's what you use here. First, outer, inner, last. You look at the first two, gives you our four x squared. Outer, two x times three, doing multiplication here. So it's plus six x. Inner, two x times three plus six x. And last, first outer inner last, three times three it gives you plus nine. So these things combine, four x squared plus 12 x plus nine. All right, so you can see that's definitely different. This is f of g of x, and it's definitely different from this, two x squared plus three. So, f of g of x is not, f composed of g of x is not g composed of f of x. But that's all this notation means. There is another notation that you'll run into that I don't like, but you see it, so we should, uh, we should deal with it. Uh, if you have f of x plus g of x, sometimes this is written as uh, f plus g parentheses of x. You'll see that they mean exactly the same thing. Don't be uh, thrown by this. It looks very bizarre and you just see it so you have to be ready for it. Uh, if you have same with plus, minus, you can have divided to, let's see, so f of x over g of x sometimes looks like f over g of x. That's another way to write it. It means exactly the same thing. Just take f of x divided by g of x. Composition has yet another notation, which although I love new symbols, that means f composed of g. And I'm not going to say much about that. Later on, this will become a big thing, but I mean, years later when you're in uh, your upper courses. So that's F composed of G of X. And that's all these mean. So when I said you were doing this already, remember you had like F of X plus H. We did that. That's really f of g of x, where g of x equals x plus h. So you've been doing this already. And that just means wherever you see x, you put in x plus h, which you can call g of x. And that's about it. Sometimes you'll have to do this graphically. So if we want f composed of g of x and you can do it also with the table and you only have a graph to work with
uh, first you find say that's x say this is g of x and this is f of x you find x and you find g of x right? and then you take this g of x say it equals 7 and you come over here and you find the same thing here g of x put that in for x and that gives you f of g of x this thing here. these are common sense things actually maybe just explain this makes it a little more difficult but when you have f composed of g of x uh, start with your x so I could ask you to find f of g of 3 went with this brown so you find g of 3 maybe you just have a table where it's x and g of x and you have a bunch of values blah 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 and 3 goes to 5 so in this case this becomes f of g of 3 which is 5 and maybe you have another table for x and f of x lots of values and here when x equals 5 this goes to 9 so then f of 5 would equal 9 whoops okay so you can do this with tables you can do it with graphs and we'll be doing it algebraically putting these things together um, this happens a lot this happens a lot in physics I was going to give you one real world example um, this is all you need to know for your first year of physics force equals mass times acceleration uh, let's see a gravitational force you know it's a constant near the earth but it actually depends on a lot of things universal gravitational constant first mass second mass well, it's this more complicated formula, and the distance between the two things squared. Say this was the Earth. Near the surface of the Earth, it's a constant, 9.8, what have you. Let's say you're way out in a satellite, and you want to know what gravitational force you're feeling, what acceleration you're going to go under. So uh, this is the radius here. It's the distance from the center of the Earth. And... This is the mass of whatever you're talking about, M2, we'll say. And the rest is the mass of the Earth, M1. So you could put in Mars there. So, so you want to know what the acceleration is. <coughs> acceleration. Don't worry too much if you're not... Well, oops, what did my pen change? Don't worry too much. Uh, let's see. So acceleration can be said to be a function of force. Acceleration, we just divide both sides by n, is f over m. In this case, f equals all this. So we can say, uh, let's give this a different name. We'll call this, I don't know, g of so we can substitute that in a sorry sorry uh, let's see we can substitute that in for f oh this is a of f so we want a a of g of r All right, so we can just find what g of r is and substitute it in wherever there's f. So this becomes a equals f. Instead of f, we have all this stuff. g m1 m2 over r squared over m. And we'll say this was, uh, in our problem here, this would be m2, mass of what's accelerating. So the neat thing here 
This is the two functions composed together. When you do that, it's pretty obvious we have an m2 in the top and an m2 in the bottom. So the acceleration of a mass anywhere does not depend on the mass of the object. So it ends up just being this. That's pretty nice. That explains why when you drop a bowling ball and a cue ball, like from a tower, which for some reason physics people like to do, they will accelerate at the same rate. And they should hit the ground at the same time. Of course, there's a air resistance that messes things up. So this becomes very different if you drop a bowling ball or a piece of paper only because of the different shape of the piece of paper. And actually these, the air resistance has a little more effect on these. But anyway, without air resistance, things hit the ground at the same time. It doesn't matter what mass you are, you will fall at the same rate. Although saying without air resistance, uh, here on the surface of the Earth, where most of us live, is a big deal. So that's function composition. I will have a few problems with this. It's pretty straightforward. Don't make it harder than it is. Just putting functions together. And oh, I will say one other thing. Let's see. Some questions will ask, say, like h of x is really two functions composed together. Break it into, uh, break that into two functions. Well, you can say, well, this is, it's just saying, working backwards, kind of as if you want to make a problem. There's a f of x and a g of x, and this is h of x is really f composed of g of x. So what are possible f of x's and g of x's to give you this? Well, let's see. g of x goes inside. Let's say g of x equals 1 over x f of x equals x cubed. What if we put those together? Uh, indeed, if you have f of g of x, wherever you see x, you put in 1 over x. Indeed, you will get this stuff cubed, g of x cubed, which is 1 over x cubed. So that's a way to break one function into two functions. And sometimes it's important to do that. Okay, straightforward stuff. I think you'll have no problem with these sets, these problem sets.